Hey Lawrence, so First United Methodist Church, we are here at the campground and you are here because this is a taste of camp meeting. I hope you enjoyed last night and if it's your first time joining us for this, I hope you enjoy tonight. I know I'm looking forward to it. This is an exciting thing that we're getting to do right now. In the midst of all of this change, here is something that we can rely on. Here is something that you are going to love. And we're going to have a night tonight of music, of some remembrances, some great messages as we get to experience a little bit of camp meeting right there in your own home. We are bringing the sawdust to you. And so I'm so glad that you got to join us for this and that you get to be here. I encourage you, make comments, you know, uh, interact below. Let's use this as a time to really share and get some fellowship with one another and really embrace the spirit of camp meeting as we get this little bit of a taste of what it's like right there in your own home. And then tomorrow, there's a special part of camp meeting. You know, every year we get to do something fun as a group to do something missional within our community. And, and this year we're supporting the summer lunch program. And here's how you can do it. If you, if you tuned in this morning, Lisa talked a little bit about this, but we have what's called our juice box challenge. So if you bring six juice boxes, not just the individual little packages, but the boxes of juice boxes. If you bring six of those by the donation center tomorrow, or you can bring them here to the campground if you're doing the prayer walk or anything like that, but specifically, if you bring them during the donation times tomorrow, you'll get a free gift from us in honor of camp meeting. And, and the person that brings the most juice boxes. So if you go above and beyond, you will get an extra special gift. We're really excited about this, and, and juice boxes are like the perennial need right now in summer lunch program, and so we're hoping to really kick it up a notch and have a great time with this drive as we do our mission during camp meeting. A taste of camp meeting and a taste of the missions, just like we always do. So bring those juice boxes in tomorrow, but for now, let's enjoy the time we have here at the campground, and let's enjoy this taste of camp meeting. Welcome. I hope you all have a good time. Let's worship together. of yesterday I wandered back to my little cabin door. I strolled beside an old rock garden and saw familiar scenes once more. I heard the organ softly playing, its music came so sweet and low. And I heard my mother sweetly singing, Oft I did so long ago I was dreaming of a little cabin When I heard somebody call my name I looked and saw a sweet old lady And it seemed I was a child again She gently put her arms around me And kissed her little boy once more I knew it was the same sweet mother that had kissed me many times before. I heard her sing the rock of ages and silver threads among the gold. She told me once again of Jesus within that cabin fold. She opened up her faded Bible where the family records used to be and I knew it was the same sweet mother that years ago had cradled me I was dreaming of a little cabin when I heard somebody call my name I looked and saw a sweet old lady and it seemed I was a child again. She gently put her arms around me and kissed her little boy once more. I knew it was the same sweet mother that had kissed me many times before. Hey guys, um, for those of you who um, may not know me, my name is Robin Lambright. 
Um, my husband and I attend the 930 worship service at First United Methodist Church. Um, we have been members at church since about 1988. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you all about a camp meeting right now. Um, taste a camp meeting. Um, sharing with you some things that I remember about camp meeting, what I love about camp meeting. Um, but first, <laughs> I have to share, um, uh, talk about the elephant in the room. We, we are all very, very sad um, that we've had to postpone camp meeting. Um, we all understand exactly why um, this uh, COVID-19 virus is just um, one of those things that you just can't plan for. Um, and we are all learning how to live life during a global pandemic. Um, that's a word you just never think you're ever going to use in, in daily conversation, but now it's something that we talk about all the time, um, and it's our reality. Um, but we all know that, that God is good and that um, this is not going to last forever, and so we just have to um, work with what we have. So um, we are going to be remembering camp meeting um, until we can all be together. To give y'all a little bit of background, when Deanne asked me to share about camp meeting, I thought, how can I put into words um, what camp meeting is and what it means um, to me? Um, to give y'all a little bit of history, that, that um, as I was thinking about what I would share with y'all today, um, one of the things that um, I recognize is when I was growing up, we were not raised in a Christian home. Um, we rarely, if ever, went to church. Um, I didn't read my Bible until I was a grown woman and had my own, had my first child. Um, my childhood was flavored with um, divorce and uh, brokenness and poverty, broken relationships, um, alcoholism. When I became a mother, um, it was it was the perfect example of how good God is and how He goes before you before you even are aware of who He is. Um, and growing up with that foundation of brokenness and dysfunction, um, in my opinion, there are um, two things that you can do. You can either choose to continue that pattern of um, dysfunction or you can move past it and try and seek something new and something different. And I think that's where this remembering things about camp meeting comes in. My first camp meeting was, um, I think it was back in 1993. Uh, my son Devin was four years old and camp meeting was like little boy heaven. The, the sawdust, the, um, the dirt, the bugs, the rocks, the sticks. Um, he, he just was, he was in hog heaven. He just loved every moment of being out there at that campground. Uh, the very first cabin we stayed in was this little tiny rickety old cabin um, where the sink was. You could look straight down um, to the ground and there it was just like this big hole. And um, they eventually tore it down um, to make way for the bathhouse. And we had gone out to the campground for uh, a cleanup day and we had all gone as a family and so we had um, Devin and Logan with us and when she saw that they had torn down our cabin she just was hysterical she burst into tears and she says mommy they have torn down our cabinet where are we going to sleep well I reassured her that it was going to be all right that we would find some place to sleep and that you know, it was going to be all right, but it was just precious. She was so upset that they had torn down her cabinet. Um, when I first stepped onto Camp Crown, one of the things that washed over me was how very different it was from going to regular normal church. 
um, it felt different. It felt special. It felt important. Um, Jared used a word in his sermon a couple of weeks ago about an anchor um, and how that anchor is um, critical to keeping you um, attached to the foundation, to something important. And I think that's the perfect description of what camp meeting means for me. Um, it's an anchor to our our history as a church. Um, it's an anchor for, for us, for my family, for, for traditions that we started back in 1993. Um, it's part of our family DNA. It's part of our church's family DNA. Um, camp meeting has been going on for over a century. There's just not that many things in today's society that, that have continued on for hundreds of years. Um, especially now in the culture that we live in, connecting and nurturing um, that DNA, that camp meeting experience is so very important, or at least I think it's very important. Holding fast um, to that anchor. As a young mom, I yearned for something and I really, really didn't know what it was. But when I look back at it, and I think, you know what, that's a good description, is that anchor. That's what it was. I wanted that foundation for my children. I wanted something for my kids that I never had. Both my children are grown now. Um, they've been long out of the house. Uh, but that camp meeting DNA, that draws them back every single year. They come back every year. Um, that DNA is now being woven into the lives of my grandchildren. Um, we have carried on that tradition of staying out for the entire week of camp meeting, my granddaughter and I. And when my grandson gets a little bit older, he's going to join right back in. I think about the stories that that sawdust could tell. I think about the lives that have been changed, the uh, call to ministry, the people that have been called to ministry at camp meeting, during camp meeting. Um, I think about the fellowship, the people that you get to talk to and spend more time with than you normally would during a normal service. Um, gracious have mercy. The food, the covered dish supper, all of those wonderful um, banana pudding and fried chicken and green beans and macaroni and cheese and you know Lord have mercy <laughs> it's good stuff uh, but I think for me the, 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 the best part about camp meeting is that lingering that takes place after the worship service people don't want to go home because there's that anchor they don't want to leave they want to stay connected to that foundation um, after worship, when everybody has gone home and the, the youth have come and, and they go up to the arbor and the kids are up there and they're having their worship time, there is, there's nothing better than listening to those young people worship. If you have never been to camp meeting, I encourage you to take the time to come and do that. Um, you won't regret it. It is a special, special, special time. It is holy ground. It is, um, it is beyond description. So until we can be together again at campground, um, we're gonna be remembering all those times that we spent under that arbor with our squishing our toes down into the sawdust and um, watching our children play in the sawdust and watching them run in the woods and gather up sticks and play with one another, watching them draw on the sidewalk with sidewalk chalk and just spending time on holy ground. It is a beautiful thing, y'all, and I would encourage y'all to come on out when we do reschedule it. Well, those are my camp meeting memories. 
I love all of y'all, and I especially love camp meeting. So, um, until we are together again, y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. I heard an old, old story, how Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is Him. He plunged me to victory, beneath a cleansing blood. the saints at First United Methodist Church of Lawrenceville. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For any I haven't met, my name is Bill Birch, and it was my privilege to serve as your senior pastor from 2013 to 2017. This year, Adam graciously asked me to share some thoughts about camp meeting as we're entering an unusual time in the life of our country. I have wonderful memories about camp meeting at Lawrenceville. There was the food, sawdust in my shoes, food, fellowship, food, worship, food, singing, and of course, food. But when you think about church, what really comes to mind is the relationships you have with one another. And know that I greatly love and miss all of you. But I wanted to especially highlight one person today, and that is the Reverend Bill Childers. Bill and Thelma were one of the first persons to greet us in the parking lot on a Saturday when I was moving into my office. You know that Methodism is a small world, and it turned out that Bill had served my home church at Little River United Methodist when he was in seminary, and he was the best of friends with my Uncle Carl and my Aunt Hazel. Now, they weren't really my uncle and aunt, but you know, in the South, any older relationship is designated in that way. And so I felt like he was already family. I so respect Bill and Thelma. 
And part of what I'm always looking for as a minister is someone who's a little older than me who serves as a pioneer of faith. Bill was at church every Sunday he was in town. And I say that, I realize we're all expected to go to church on Sundays, but listen, brothers and sisters, ministers do this as a living. We've gotten plenty of church in our lifetime. And yet he was always faithful. He was always supportive. He always said a kind word about the sermon. And he loved camp meeting. And he was there for every service. And part of the joy of my life was to watch Bill sing because he sings with gusto. He sings with fervor. You can tell he believes what he is proclaiming. And the year while I was there, when he got to serve as the song leader, it was not only joyous for him, it was joyous for me. Just to see his faith in his face, in his voice, in his heart, in his life. And so while I hope you have a wonderful, blessed camp meeting, I hope you have wonderful opportunities to share together, even if it's virtually or digitally, I would remind you it's those relationships that mean the most. And relationships are not defined by space or by time. And it's my hope that you have some pioneers in faith, some mentors like I do and Bill, and that God will continue to bring us closer to one another as we draw closer to God. We claim in faith that there's nothing in this world or the world to come that can overcome us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So until that day that we are gathered forever before God's throne, may the Lord God Almighty bless, preserve, and keep you this day, now, and forevermore. Amen. Our closing hymn tonight is There is Power in the Blood. We'll be singing the first and last verses. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the prayer.